Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, we're gonna build this. This is a Wi-Fi controlled, sensor-driven, ventilated, space bucket hydroponic system. Let's get to building it. All right, so the boys from Super Green Lab sent me over this DIY, pretty much whatever grow room you want kit. In this package exists all of the things like ventilation, lighting, a smart controller, humidity and temperature sensor, everything you need to control a grow room environment, as well as the lights, so that you can customize anything into your own personal grow space. So let's have a look at what's in the box. So they've sent me out the Ninja Bundle, apparently. In the box, we've got a smaller box. So one Ninja Grow Bundle white and <laughs> uh, a bunch of flowers on a sticker. <laughs> what kind of flowers are those though? A box of beads and the Ninja Grow Bundle. These are the LED lights. On each one of these PCBs, you have 36 Samsung LM301B diodes. Some Super Green Lab sticks. And you've got six of these panels. Now, each one of these panels is 15 watts, adding up to a total of 90 watts for the whole kit. Now the PCB here I assume is acting as the heat sink. You could add a heat sink to these just by putting some thermal paste on the back and adding an aluminium heat, thinned heat sink if you wanted. But because of the size of these and the wattage, I don't think we'll be needing a heat sink. I think that the PCB itself will provide enough of a heat sink to dissipate the heat. So you've got your cabling to connect it all up. Uh, so this will connect all of your panels and your fan and everything together. You've got an American standard power cord. Now, I'll be switching this out for an Australian standard power cord. Oh wow, okay. So they include an, Amer oh, that's not American. This is your American power cord. I'd say that, I'm not sure what that is. I know this is your uh, European power cord. Um, so I'd say that that's just another international power cord. No Australian, but I've got one to replace this, so that's fine. It's just a standard IEC, so it's not that hard to find. You've got your power supply. This is your AC adapter. Mounting screws and an SGL plate. This is interesting. I'd say that is your humidity and temperature sensor. That's your smart motherboard. There's the brains of the outfit. And this is... This is the fan. Yeah, look at that. So this will just fit into the corner of your grow room and blow out the side. Okay, so thank you to Super Green Lab for supplying all this stuff for me to make a space bucket. Links in the description to where you can purchase. Let's go to the local hardware store and see if they have any space buckets. All right, so I've got a rough plan for the space bucket and it includes a trash can and some kind of really compact hydroponic system. So I don't even really want the hydroponic system to be inside of the bucket itself. Uh, I really just want the system to exist outside the bucket with the plant in the bucket. So I've got to figure out some way of actually getting uh, this system to work. And I think I'm gonna use a system that I haven't used before which is a wicking system where it will wick into the actual bucket itself. So let's go and find a bucket to use. Oh, that's a bucket, but it's a bit small. Hi guys, Hi. how you going? Have you, have, do you guys know what a space bucket is? Yeah. You know what a space bucket is. Can you show me where the space buckets are? <laughs> <laughs> so this is Blakey. He's gonna show us where the space buckets are. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, this is more like it. Yeah, all right. Here are the space buckets you're looking for, sir. Oh, thank you very much, Blake. It was no worries, uh, a pleasure. Mate. Pleasure as usual. <laughs> so I've got uh, my space bucket, uh, the 
Bunnings team were very nice in directing me directly to the space bucket section of the store. And uh, now we're going to find something that we can put this on top of so we can create a wicking hydroponic system uh, without taking up any space within the bucket itself because it's actually quite a small bucket. So I'm just going to have a look around and see what I can find that we can uh, put this on top of and then utilize as a reservoir for the system. Okay, so I think I've found the perfect res uh, for this system. It's just a 50 centimeter round saucer. So uh, the saucer will just sort of sit underneath our space bucket like so, um, and it fits perfectly. Uh, however, I'm going to put across the saucer, I'm gonna have just um, two pieces of some kind of um, metal or something, um, wood maybe, and then uh, the wicks will just drop straight from the bottom into the res here, and you'll actually be able to just uh, top it up with a watering can or something, and you can see it once this is lifted slightly above, you'll be able to see the level of the water and you'll be able to top up the system from below without even opening the system. All right, so I've picked up some aluminium, it's not angle, a square tube and uh, end caps for the base. So we'll connect that to the bottom of the bucket. So I need some bolts to connect basically all of the panels and electrics to the bucket so it's all nice and neat. Probably the best advice I could give you is to bring the components along with you because I've had to make a guess as to which size uh, nuts and bolts I'll need for the build. So I've got a ton of M M4 because I believe that is the correct size, but we'll see. All right, well, I'm bound to have forgotten something, uh, but let's go and see if we can make a space bucket. <laughs> All right. So luckily, the local hardware store has some very knowledgeable people and they found me this bucket. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna set up our space bucket as a wicking system. We're gonna have it wick from underneath from a reservoir external to the bucket itself. So let's get to the build part. Wow, I got really lucky when I chose these bolts. So these are M4, I just eyed these and got lucky so uh, at least you don't have to get lucky now you can just go and straight purchase the m4 bolts to mount all of these plates it looks like they're all m4 even the blower has m4 bolt holes so m4 bolts for mounting okay so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to space out my led panels where i want them on the lid of my space bucket um, now i've got six it stands to reason that I just have them spaced out evenly. Hopefully, it'll be the perfect size. Look at that. <laughs> nice. I am going to add in, on the inside of this bucket, we're gonna put in a reflective wall, so I'm not too worried about them being uh, too close to the edge. And this layout actually allows me to also have the fan centered. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to design and then 3D print a, an off take, so a curvature that goes down into and out the roof of this lid. Now, if you're not able to 3D print something like that, you might just use a square piece of aluminum tubing and cut out two of the sides that you want and then just stick it down to the lid and it would redirect the air current down. Since I've got 3D printers available to me, I'm gonna do a quick bit of design work so that um, I can just shoot it straight out the lid. So now I'm gonna drill the holes and bolt the panels to the roof. Now I've purchased slightly longer bolts than I need because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this four millimeter tubing, which fits perfectly over the end of an M4 bolt. And I'm gonna use that as a spacer between the LED PCBs and the plastic so that if they get a bit warm, they won't melt the plastic. I don't think they'll get that warm. I'm just doing it as a precaution. Now I'm just gonna drill out the holes in the lid and attach the LED PCBs to the lid. Now it'll depend how far you want the LEDs from the object that you're attaching them to as to how deep you cut your uh, four millimeter spaces. I'm probably just going 10 millimeters. That'll give me plenty of circulation around the PCBs 
to give them the maximum cooling possible to make them last as long as possible as well. Now we can just put our LED PCB onto our lid like so, tighten up our bolts. There we go, all done. That looks pretty bloody cool, hey? And they're all facing towards where the canopy of the plant will be at the bottom of our space bucket. So we just place that on top. Can't even tell there's lights in there <laughs> yet. That's our lights done. They're all set up and ready to go. There's some nice space behind the PCBs to allow any heat to dissipate, uh, not through the plastic rather, just into the air. And it's nice and neat, which we love. So for the next step, I'm actually going to 3D print an air outlet for this uh, fan. I'll have the 3D print files that I make available on my, my Patreon so that if you do end up getting this set, uh, you can use those 3D print files to print your own air outlet. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can just cut cardboard to shape and then sticky tape it to the top of your space bucket and it would do just fine. Uh, I'm only doing this because I have the materials available. Okay, so I've designed this part uh, to fit essentially uh, onto this exhaust and then it will push the air out uh, through the top of the bucket. I'll just export the STL and then we can print that part and while we're printing, we can finish the rest of the build. Okay, so our exhaust is printing and I've just got to wait for that to finish and then we can cut our hole for our exhaust and add it in. So we can put the lid aside for a second while we wait for that part to print, while we make the rest of the base, which is essentially where the plant will be housed in our space bucket. So the plan I've got for the base is, I'm gonna attach these two square aluminum tubes to the base. They are going to act as supports for this system on top of the reservoir which is this large 500 millimeter dish. And they're also gonna help block out light from the air intake holes, where, which will be underneath these two bars. I'll drill holes and we can bolt them down. All right, so our base is together and the bolts on the bottom will stop it sliding off that uh, res, even if it gets a bit of a jolt. Now we can drill in our ventilation holes in the bottom. The way that I'm gonna drill my ventilation holes is between the two bolts so that wherever the ventilation holes are, they'll be covered by these two bars and won't let any light through into the nutrient solution, or at least will stop most light. The canopy should take care of most of this light anyway. And those holes should give us plenty of ventilation from below. Now, for the plant at the bottom of our space bucket, I'm going to be using a fabric pot, which will be sat over the top of this. This is, it's actually macrame uh, cotton rope, and it's a really good wicking material. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to have holes coming out of the bottom of the space bucket, where I'll have multiple ropes dangling into the nutrient reservoir below the space bucket. And on top of those cotton ropes, will be sitting this fabric pot, which should wick up from the cotton rope into the grow media. The grow media being a cocoa perlite mix. So let's drill the holes in the bottom of the space bucket for our wicking rope. Now we can just take our rope, cut it to the length that you want. So probably about just over the width of the bucket. Then we can cut that into four lengths and thread them through our holes. Like that. And now when we place that over our res, that will just sit down in the hydroponic nutrient and wick up from below along the rope and underneath our fabric pot planter, which will just sit on the wick. Okay, so it's time to mount the motherboard. Uh, so with this motherboard, 
I'm actually going to mount it in pride of place on top of the system, just like here. Because I've put the lights on, I'm just removing a light so that I have access to screw the motherboard down and then I can screw that light back down. So I'm guessing that that goes on there, but the confusing thing is I only have four screws. So I can choose to, I can choose to go in from the back and hold it on the board or go in from the front and hold this shield on. So I guess I can just half half it and do you know, two in the two in the top and uh, I guess two in the bottom. That works, I guess. <laughs> It's not going anywhere. And from that, we can wire all our lights. Now, I'm gonna wire them through this central section uh, once we have our fan attached. Uh, they'll come out from behind the fan and then back to the lights. Let's reattach this light panel. So I'm now going to run all of my light cords, which are these, through uh, this hub at the top and we can wire up all the lights and this will all come out from behind where I'll be attaching uh, this fan. Hopefully, it'll be about there and I'll be able to run them all out of here and to wherever they need to go. Oh, oh well, I guess that's a big enough hole. <laughs> so we can run all our lights in through that. These are our light cords. So they're just labeled light on the PCB. And I just run a cable straight from each plug point through the hole we've created. And then up the back of the light, plug straight into the light itself. They just plug into the light like that. And for my sanity, I'm just gonna zip tie them. Okay, now we can install the temperature and humidity probe. Uh, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to utilize the wire seal and I'm going to drill a hole the size of that thread internally so that I can just, just tack it on, done up, right between two of the lights. So let's do that. We'll just poke our temperature and humidity sensor through that and our shield goes over the top and attaches there and... It's all connected. Now I've just plugged it in and I'll just zip tie it up so it's nice and neat with all the other cables. There we go. All right, so I'm now going to line the interior of the space bucket with white reflective panda film. Uh, to do this, I'm just gonna use a spray adhesive to, on the inside and I'm gonna cut a sheet that will fit perfectly on the interior of this bucket. And here, here is our vent. So I'll just peel that off. And we'll take out the supports. There we go. That's the support. That is my ventilation duct. So we can add that in to our build. Okay, so now that I've printed a couple of vents. I made it slightly larger than my original design so that it would fit over the top of the fan. And I'm going to drill out the holes and install the fan, as well as run the wire behind the fan up to the motherboard. Now we can just fit our exhaust cover over the top and I'm gonna seal around the edges uh, with silicone once I have this screwed down. For the bolts that are gonna go through this one, I'm just going to add in a couple of little spaces so that it stays up from the bottom as uh, the edge actually overlaps with this ribbing. And then I can seal, the, uh, seal around it with silicon. First, I'm actually going to drill out the holes. Then we can cut out the uh, square that's going to allow the air to escape. Go. And 
that is where the air will come out, the top. So I'll just bolt this down and we can test it out before I go gluing anything. Look at that. Very nice. So, let's get rid of these rough edges and I can bring my wire around to meet up with the motherboard and the first motor. So I'll clip that in there like that. And it looks like we're good to power it up. <laughs> so I can do away with all those IEC cords. I've got a replacement Australian one here. I always have these. Light manufacturers tend not to include Australian leads. All right, I actually don't know whether this is gonna turn on immediately. Um, I haven't done this before, so here it goes. We, we are in business. Okay, I'm gonna pull up the app and I think we go into controllers and we add a controller. So brand new controller will join the network that it wants us to. So we'll set the controller name to base bucket. All right, wee, hello. All right, so let's test all the lights. I've set them up in a chain too, so it should go like that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, LEDs are fine. All good there. They're really bright. All right, now, Wi-Fi. Who chose? There we go. So it looks like it's all up and running. Uh, we've got the fan working and it's blowing air out the exhaust hole, which is perfect. Wow. Oh, I might get a par meter onto that. 700 par there. So that's a decent amount of par for the wattage of the light, which is about 90 watts, I reckon. All right, so it now wants me to add my first plant. So I'm now going to fill my grow bag with grow media, plant my seedling, and we can add it into our hydroponic system and fill it up ready for the grow. Okay, so for the grow, I'm gonna be using one of the capsicum seedlings that I've been propagating in my NFT. So we'll just grab one of those out. And as you can see, it's got a nice healthy root system covered in algae. And we can just pop that into our grow bag, which we're going to fill up with 6040 cocoa perlite. This is gonna allow the grow bag to wick up from below and feed the plant. So we'll fill up our grow bag. like so, and we can place in our capsicum. There we go. So now that we've got our plant ready, we can put that aside and set up our space bucket. With the lid on, like that, we can set up our first plant. Here's our plant. We're gonna name it capsicum and we're going to create plant. We'll add it to the Hucho lab. And here we go. Well, it's neither a photo or an auto, so uh, let's just go with uh, auto for now. Uh, it's in the seedling stage. Uh, the germination date would have been, so let's just take a pick, why not? There we go. Let's go to the capsicum. Here we have all of our environmental controls. So we've got light, ventilation and schedule. Oh, and it graphs the temperature and humidity as well as the ventilation and the VPD. That's pretty cool. So they're all on 100%. I'll probably turn them down. Before we do that, let's have a look at the PAR. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to prop this PAR sensor up against the side so that you can see. And then I'll put the PAR sensor in the center and I'll put my camera down facing the PAR sensor. And hopefully we can then get a good idea of the par while the lid's shut. All right, let me put the lid on. There we go. So that is the par. I can't see it right now, but that's the par in the center of the space bucket at 100% light. Uh, I wonder if I can turn it down. So light, all right, we'll go 50% 50, 50 for all of them. So it's around 50% for all of them, it's not exact. And that's the par 
uh, for all the lights at 50%. And that's at 100%. All right, so this app actually lets you do a schedule as well. So you can set your schedule. So I've selected vegetative because uh, capsicum don't respond to a photosensitive period. <laughs> I wonder if... And you can change those schedules as well, which is great. On hour, off hour. It's actually six hours, that's fine. So it's on for 18 hours, off for, th for zero minutes. That's, and that's fine, I'll, I'll keep that. And then you can change that depending on your plant and the cycle that you want it to be on and off. So I've selected my vegetative stage. Now I can change the time at which that turns on and off and I assume that that's based on your local time. And that allows you to fine tune your cycles throughout the growth of the plant. It also allows you to fine tune ventilation. So you can have this fan react to either a timer, uh, the light cycle, or the temperature and humidity sensor that's included in the kit. So this blower will remain on until it hits a high temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, and then it will ramp up the blower to 100%. And that's 100% power. So that's actually putting out a fair amount of air at the moment. And you can adjust those blower settings to whatever you want depending on the environment and the plant that you're growing. All right, okay, I'm gonna have these lights on full ball for about half an hour. I'll put them into our space bucket and then we can measure the temperature of the lights once they've been on for a decent period of time. All right, while I'm waiting to test the light for the heat, we're gonna actually set up our capsicum for the hydroponic system. You wanna make sure that the plant that you're putting in, in this wicking system, is in media that's completely saturated so that it allows it to wick up from below. I've got hydroponic nutrient here. It's an EC of 2.0, pH of 6.6. .6. So I'm just gonna make sure that this growing media is completely saturated with hydroponic nutrient and that it runs out the bottom. And then the wicking will be able to occur from below the bag within the bucket. So that's running straight through the bag. I'm just gonna leave that soak in there for a second. Make sure that wicking is happening, happening from below. Then I'm going to throw out this nutrient and I'll fill it up with some fresh nutrient and we'll allow it to wick from below the bucket. And I'm just gonna seal up these gaps uh, with this gray flexible silicon sealant. The temperature sensor is telling me that the space bucket is at 30 degrees Celsius. And that makes sense because if I take a reading, at the exhaust, it's at about 29.7 fluctuating to 30 degrees. And that's about perfect. Uh, the sensor is telling me that. And at the bottom of the bucket, I'm getting a temperature of 25.4. Now in Fahrenheit, that's 77 degrees. And in Fahrenheit for, so it's about 29 degrees at the top of the bucket, and that's 84.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's have a look at the LED diodes now that they've been running for a while. So that's 36 degrees Celsius, 97.5 degrees Fahrenheit on one of the diodes. So let's go to the actual inside where the bucket and is right next to the diode. So 44.5 44 degrees Celsius and 112 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is getting a little bit warm, but it's actually, it's not too bad. Like you can still put your hand on that. I'm actually pretty happy with those numbers. I definitely recommend putting those spaces in between the lid and the PCBs though. So I've turned the lights down to a 60%. I'm gonna get rid of this nutrient and we'll start with fresh nutrient because some of the salts might have washed out of the cocoa. So we'll put that plant there and get rid of this. I'll add in more nutrient and you can fill that right up. I'm just not filling it right up for now because I want to show you how this works. So we'll just put this aside for now. So the way that this hydroponic system works is at the bottom, we've got our wicks, which wick up from below as you put them down into the nutrient which is contained within this res below. If you want to, you can add in 
a little bit of detergent to break the surface tension on the water and that will actually allow it to wick a lot easier. Um, however, I'm just gonna try it without the detergent to start with. Just gonna make sure those wicks are in the water and we should start seeing wicking action from below the res up into the bottom of the bucket. And that wicking action will then translate the water and nutrients into our bag. So that's started to wick up from below now. And onto those wicks, we can place our grow bag. And that will just start to wick up from below as the plant transpires the water and absorbs the nutrients to create more plant matter. And it will utilize the res full of hydroponic nutrient. And as it utilizes that res, we can just top it up from the outside with a watering can, we don't even need to open our space bucket to know that the plant is drinking the nutrient and water. So now I can just put on our lid. Just before we finish up, I just wanna let you guys know, yes, there is a little bit of light leakage here, but when you put a carbon filter over the top of this fan and the carbon filters that fit over this fan are a common range hood carbon filter, it actually would block all of the light that's leaking out of the top of this system. It also stops any nasty odors that you have coming from any flowering plants that you have growing in this system. And I know that a lot of you guys love growing lavender, but hate the smell going through your house. So don't worry, your house isn't gonna stink of lavender if you wanna grow lavender in this system. And there it is. That's how you build a smart, space bucket hydroponic system. Now, as you can see, I've already got the time-lapse camera up and running. Like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss the time-lapse that I do in this space bucket. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Hoochos.